is your relationship with time? Are you wired and tired, stressed and overwhelmed, busy and going nowhere, or just want to scale your business? Welcome to Take Back Time with your host, Penny Zenker. Penny focuses on books, strategies, tools, and tips to help you work smarter and approach your time more strategically. As a result, you can have more energy, focus, and get more done in less time. Be more efficient and effective. Get ready to take back time. Hello, and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zanker, and I'm your host. And today, we're going to talk about when you get stressed and off track, how do you get refocused and get back on track when you're just taken away? So I'm excited today to talk about that because we all know how that feels. And today I'm excited to have with me Mrithu Parikh. She is the stress squasher. So she is going to help you to get control of all your demands. Her intro says you want to get her on speed dial. I like that. She helps over whelmed mompreneurs work with to help prioritize and systematize so they can take control of the demands and distractions so that you can manage work and at home. She's passionate about getting women, and I would imagine this is also valuable for men, so don't think you're left out here, the results that they want, whether they're doubling their business and revenue, losing weight, or increasing time for yourself, right? That's the same for you men out there. There's something here for you. So welcome, Ritu. It's great to have you here. Penny, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I love your energy and you nailed my name. So that's really impressive. That's an anomaly. Trust me, (laughs) but it's great to have you here. And I think that that is talking about how to get back on track after distractions is huge. But before we get there, why are you passionate about productivity and working with mompreneurs and other people to help them get back on track? Well, I started my career, my company is called Life is Organized. I started that almost 12 years ago, but I started as a professional home organizer. Mm. That's Life is Organized. And I was very passionate about that. Very systemized, love organization and simplifying and design. And so it was a perfect fit. However, after about four or five years in my business, And I was primarily actually coaching online. I recognized very quickly, I didn't love going into people's houses, but I love teaching and the mindset behind it and the coaching that both my clients and I were going through a similar journey. I was hearing from a lot of clients that they didn't have the time or they couldn't prioritize the home organization. They couldn't even get to it, right? Even if they had the skills and knew what to do, we didn't have the time to do it. They were so busy. And I, as a business owner, was simultaneously kind of going through this same stuff, even though I was teaching organization, I was kind of feeling overwhelmed myself. I was raising two kids, running the business, all the things that come with being a mom and growing your profession. And so I just kind of naturally for my own personal development and also hearing this from so many women, I just started throwing myself into this world of productivity, time management, focus, reading, studying, taking classes, all the things until I realized that this is the foundation. This is the crux. We can get to the organization after, but if you can't prioritize, you can't figure out you know, how to make time for all these things, then it's not going to happen. And so essentially my business evolved over that next 18 months to productivity and time management. Being a mom, having kids, I'm really focused on other mom entrepreneurs as I can relate really well. As you mentioned, of course, this all resonates with everybody in terms of dealing with demands and distractions. But now I really specialize with other mom entrepreneurs to help them get control of all their demands and distractions and really feel like they command their own time and energy. Right. One of the things that you said that I wanted to highlight, right, is we hear this all the time. We even hear ourselves saying it, that we don't have the time. Like, I kind of feel like when I catch myself saying it, right, I'm realizing that that's the biggest cop-out excuse Because it just means that I'm not setting my priorities effectively, or at least that's what I believe is behind it, right? Is that if we set our priorities and they were clear, we wouldn't have competing priorities and we wouldn't be sort of blaming time for our uh, (laughs) challenges. What's your thought behind that phrase, I don't have the time? Absolutely. I think if we even switch the words with don't, and won't or can't, then it changes the energy behind it. So all of a sudden now, if you're like, 
I won't go to the gym today. I won't exercise, right? That changes the energy as to you made a decision mm. versus can't is, or I don't have, it. it's just like, it's out of my control. So it sort of puts that responsibility back on yourself. And that can sometimes be enough, like that little switch in language. Again, you may not go to the gym still, but at least you were in charge of that decision. You know, absolutely. But, I love right? that. I'm all about the energy of our thought as my TEDx says and words, and it does help somebody to redirect it back to, Hey, I'm making this choice. I absolutely. love that. Yeah. So is that one of the strategies that you use with people is to help them to shift that so that they know that that's a choice for them? I think that's definitely a part of having the intention and being deliberate. We hear these words all the time, but what does that mean? So yeah, I'm all about energy and words and how do we set ourselves up? We're our own worst enemies. We all know that. So, so much of this comes intrinsically from us, the words we choose, the thoughts we choose, how we set ourselves up for success. So certainly like the verbiage and the communication, even to ourselves is Mm going to help us like move forward or not. I think another thing that I really work with my clients on in terms of if we fall off track, everything feels haywire. Just, I had this great plan. I hear this all the time. I had this great plan, right? It's a squirrel and now it's off. Sometimes we have this all or nothing attitude. And so an analogy would be, if you want to lose weight, you're watching your calories for the day, and then you go eat a big plate of chocolate cake. They're like, oh, forget it. I'll just start Monday again with the diet. I think that happens with our time too. Sometimes we're so far off. We're like, I'll just start next week. I'll start Monday. Or even I'll start tomorrow. But what I encourage you to do is start thinking of your day in quarters. So you have your morning, you have maybe that like mid morning, then afternoon, and then night or evening. And so when you fall off track, you don't have to wait till next week. You don't have to wait till Monday. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. I'll be like, okay, let me just get back on track on my next quarter. So my morning was really off. Let me just get back on track for my lunch or for like my midday. And so that helps too, because I think that, yeah, that all or nothing mentality just keeps us, as you know, just more overwhelmed because now things are piling up and piling up and piling up. So it's like feeling even heavier. So let's just like stop that nonsense right away and say, okay, my next quarter of my day, let me get back on track. Right. That makes a lot of sense. I really like that as a strategy too, because it's true that we kind of have that thought process and that mentality. Where does it come from? Like, I get that by putting it into quarters, right? Where you're actually structuring, right? Like you would when you come into the home in the beginning, when you were organizing people's homes, you're structuring it. So you're structuring people's thoughts and their days. Where does that come from? How do we get stuck there? We're hard on ourselves. We're really hard on ourselves. We can be our own, as I mentioned, our own worst enemies. We self-sabotage. We're just really hard. So it's like, if I didn't get it right, if it wasn't perfect, if it wasn't great the first time, I'm not good at this. I wasn't cut out for this. We can start going down that rabbit hole of bad self-sabotaging thoughts. Never good. So there is just lack of even, I think, self-awareness because we're so crazy. We're so busy. We're so exhausted. We're so scattered. And so it's hard to sometimes tap into that and be like, okay, it's not the end of the world. I'm not so terrible. I'm not so bad. I can get back on the horse, but it does sort of take that awareness to kind of pull you out of it and Mm. you do it. And like anything else, I know, Penny, you believe in this practice. We just got to practice this little habit. Practice is what's going to get us there. We do that over and over and over. We become less overwhelmed when things get off track because they're like, oh, I got a plan. You can get back on in the next hour. So how can I practice that? I like that. So let's talk about ways to practice those quarters. Yeah. Well, one, knowing about it right now, this is going to sound trite or old school, but put the sticky note on your laptop, put the little sticky note on your fridge of that, like the really simple get back on track your day in quarters, whatever that is, that little mantra or little saying that will do it. I believe in these visual anchors. Yeah, We can too. see things because again, in the frenzy, in the chaos, how do you tap back into a hundred thoughts in your mind? You can't, but if you visually see it right there, you're like, oh wait, okay. I know what to do. And I have a visual Thinking. anchor. <laughs> yeah. So it seems silly. It's like a sticky note. Really? That's the big thing. Well, yeah, because it works and it's simple and we don't want to overcomplicate anything. We don't need any more overcomplicated at all. Let's make Absolutely. this as simple as possible. Yeah. Simple works and we don't have to resist it. So yeah, I love that. Those visual anchors, reminders. Would you also have people like when you work with them, do you have them set up their day in quarters? Like, so what comes to mind is the many uses of the four quadrants, right? Of There's a tool called priority matrix, right? Like you could actually set up those quadrants however you want. Would you kind of encourage somebody to kind of 
organize their day in quarters and put, here's what I'm going to do in the first quarter of my day, the second quarter, the third quarter, and the fourth quarter? We do. I look at it in terms of energy. So we go through pretty much the exact exercise you're saying, but we look at it energy instead of the matrix of where's your highest energy? Where's your lowest energy? Where do you feel a slump? Where do you feel so the time of day? Is that what you yeah, mean? Based on the time of day. Okay, yeah. right. So typically for most working women or people, most professionals, typically, not for everybody, there's people who are out night owls. For most of us, the morning is our freshest time. We've slept, we had a good breakfast, we're charged. So that's a great time for deep work. That's a great time to really focus on the like strategy mm-hmm. planning, the things that you never seem to get to. Research shows that later in the afternoon, contrary to popular belief, is a great time for creative work, brainstorming, more in that three o'clock, four o'clock range. People think, oh, post-lunch, I'll be tired. Well, it's kind of post-post-lunch, right? It's like we right. kind of get this surge of energy then. And typically then that means that in between time, maybe 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock is a great time for a little bit more, and I want to say mindless work, for the emails and getting directions and just mm-hmm. responses that are a little bit more rote. And then nighttime is more preparing, preparation, planning kind of stuff. So. It's not exactly the same for everyone, but if I had to generalize, that's kind of a good format and that's how we work with the energy. So we look at that energy and then we're looking at what are your biggest priorities? Are you in alignment with that? How do you want to live? So we kind of get into this whole focus area and then start mirroring in that in terms of actually creating, structuring the day. Where do those fit in? How do we make those things work? And really start getting more into the nitty gritty of that. My goal is for someone to wake up with a plan that they can trust every day. I know wrenches are going to be thrown. We all know emergencies and crises come in. But if we don't even have a foundation, if we don't even have a roadmap for the day, well, then we're just good as nothing. We're just going to be reacting all day. Nothing's in our control. So we may as well start somewhere. And yes, other things will come in, but we'll manage a lot better when we have somewhere to fall back, right? The next quarter will be better next quarter of the day. Right. If you don't have a roadmap and when you're not getting back into anything, it just doesn't get you jumpstarted. I know I feel that way too when I don't have that clarity of what I'm planning to do today, then it's so easy to get distracted and it's so easy to just let time slip away, right? And not really do those things that are on the plan. Absolutely. I feel like so many people believe that success is going to come from more doing. I got to do more. I got to do more. I got to do more. I believe that success comes from more planning. (laughs) So if we spent that time and we were talking about how do things go or they go off track, you could pull yourself back and just plan instead of jumping into let me do, because do is usually reacting, putting on more stress. You're not thinking strategically. You're not thinking necessarily right. what's going to make me feel most rewarded. It's often the low hanging fruit or just what's easiest or just whatever started in front of you at the moment when you're planning, which seems so counterintuitive at the time. You're like, oh my gosh, this is such a waste of time. I have such little time left. Why would I sit here and make a list and plan out my day? Well, that's what's going to really get you on track, get you focused, get you in alignment with, well, I only have four hours left. What are the most important things and going through that process? So I would encourage anyone listening to when you're in chaos, when you're in the middle of it all plan before you do like take the time to plan. And that's going to serve you so much better than jumping back into the doing. I talk about it in terms of action bias. And I saw it somewhere. It was like actual research that was done that an object in motion stays in motion, but we have this bias that we have to always be in motion and onto the next thing and the next thing. And it doesn't give us the space, like you're saying, to plan, to step back, to reflect, to see what's working and what's not working. So we just jump to the next thing, which might not be the best next thing. It's just a series of reactions versus really being purposeful and intentional about everything that you're doing. So I've experienced that myself too, right? And I constantly, like you said, this is all a practice. So I wanted to ask you, because people always say to me, oh, you're so organized. This comes easy to you. No, like I have to really work at being organized and thinking in a certain way because I'm a little squirrel-like. So it's a practice for me because some of us have natural tendencies of what we do. And then there's those adaptive Would you say that this for you is natural or is it adaptive? I probably like you. It's definitely a combo. I'd say I'm for sure more naturally organized. Like when I see a space, even when I think of a system, what might seem complicated to someone else, I can simplify it very easily and organize it. That comes very naturally. Focused management or attention management 
is a learned practice for me. And I often say, if I wasn't preaching this and teaching it and podcasting and writing about it every single day, I would be so much worse off. It's because I'm getting that constant reinforcement. I need it because I too feel like I have a monkey mind. And because of what I do, I guess I get to hear this over and over. So it's just very beneficial for me. But that to me does not come naturally and I have to work very hard at it. What's the hardest part for you? What is that thing that keeps coming up over and over again for you? I'd say in terms of the focus, it's the thoughts more than email. It's a one thought leads to another thought that I'm like, oh, wait, no, this would be better for this thing. I should jump over on this thing. And even though I write things down and even though it's my own thoughts, and I think it's very true for everybody, but especially if you're a creative person, if you're on a self-development path, you're just always thinking and growing and the thought of the thought of the thought can start throwing me off. Yeah, that can throw me off for sure. The thought, the <laughs> thought, you know what that reminds me of? Anxiety, right. it perpetuates itself because people are anxious of becoming anxious and what happens when they get anxious. So my son has really grappled with anxiety and he is always looking for trash cans or way out of a room in case he has to throw up because that's what happens when he gets anxious. So he gets anxious about getting anxious. And that's kind of like when you said the thought about the thought about the thought, right? I wonder if there's some connection there. I'm going yeah. deep here. I'm thinking deep. Like, right, right. So I'll give you like just a really, an example that just happened and that's maybe more relatable. So I'll be doing something. I'll say I'm working on invoicing or something. And then I'm like, oh my God, I have a really great podcast thought. And I can just go right on a list, but it's beyond a thought. It's like an entire dialogue I've had to myself. Right. Like, it's like, here's the three points. Oh, and here's I'm with the framework. And so I worried if I don't get that down at that minute, I will forget it. It's more than just adding it to a to-do list. And I really need to capture that whole thought. So I have found more productive ways to do that. I will get on my phone and do a voice memo because that's yes. much better. So I'm finding ways because I don't want to lose that. It's not enough to just throw it on a list, but at the same time, it can really derail me from what I was doing. So I think finding those systems or little hacks at that point mm -hmm. is very helpful. Absolutely. I just got myself one of these, they call it remarkable. Oh, yes. I do like, like, it. like I'm like you, I get all these, and I'm sure many people are like that. I've got notes everywhere. And, you know, I used to buy different notebooks for different things. And then everything's all disorganized in all these notebooks like that are spread all over the place. <laughs> and so I'm using this as the electronic version of all of those notes. And that way, if there's a podcast idea, I can go right into the podcast yes. folder and that sort of idea dump area yes. and then process it from there. But it is finding ways to keep those thoughts organized and get them down and also get them out, right? Because if they sit in there, all that energy is taken up thinking about, I got to remember to remember that. Right. Absolutely. I think creative people are just, we're just like that. For sure. So I ask everybody this question who's on the show, actually, I haven't asked it for a little while. What's your definition of productivity and why? So I believe that productivity is actually tied to an emotional state. Because it is partially when you get your results in less time and less effort, for sure. But I think part of it has to be something that makes you feel really successful. It makes you feel really rewarded because we could do a whole day at a to-do list of everything, less time, less effort. But if it wasn't like what was tied to your health goals or you're being present with your family or whatever the thing is, then it's not productive to me. So I think there is a level of kind of take a long time to answer this, but it's your time and effort is less, but also it's tied to your emotional rewarding state. I totally agree. I used to say, and people used to say it's ridiculous. I said productivity is a feeling. It's like happiness. Yes. It's like we chase it, but because it's a feeling, happiness is a feeling, right? You can't define it as any like one thing that you did. It's just something that you know that you're there when you have it, right? And so it is, it's a feeling. And I think it's tied to progress. Like you said, it's tied to something that's important to us. When we feel like we're making progress towards something important, then we get that feeling. But it's funny. I've never heard anybody else on the show kind of relate it to a feeling the way that I think it is too. So that's very that's cool. We have a lot in common there. We do, because I haven't heard it either. And I almost was like, should I say that? Because I do. I think it's a feeling. In fact, I always tell clients, 
I'm sure you hear this, like, but how do I know what to prioritize? I have a hundred things on my list. What are my top three? And I always say, go back to your feelings. Like when your head hits the pillow tonight, what would make you feel most successful today? What's going to make me feel the best that I did? And then it comes to them very quickly. Absolutely. I love that. So what's a tip that you do? Like I have something that I do at the end of every day that helps me to feel more productive. Like, do you have some tips and tricks about help people to connect to what's important or what they did or I mean, I wish I was better about it. I wish I was better with actually journaling more at night or doing a gratitude at night. I typically, when I do it, I'm not hundred percent. I'm pretty good at it. Not always. I'll do it more in the morning, but I've been leaning towards switching that and doing, I think the wrap up might be even better for me than the morning. I just haven't made that switch yet. I'll be honest. Okay. So um, you feel so- journaling like would be yeah. a way to really have a good way to wrap up the day. Yeah, to really wrap it up. Okay. And I've heard that from a lot of people. They're doing it at night versus the morning. I haven't just gotten there yet. So that would be something I would like to do, a practice I want to get into my life. But on a much simpler version of that, it's just no matter what this I do do, I look through my calendar the next day. I just want to make sure I know what's in front of me, what time to get up, what meetings do I have? Do I need directions? Do I need to pick up my clothes at night? Like that is definitely happening. If I ever once in a while skip that, I always I'm screwed in the morning. Like something I forgot I had, or I never let to wake up early, or I just something is always off. So that makes me feel so much better. It takes such a weight off my shoulders. But if I could couple that with a little bit of journaling at night, I think that would be great. Yeah. I don't journal at night either. I write what I'm grateful for in the morning. So that's been a long time ritual for me just to get in the right state of mind in the morning. But something that I started to do with a friend of mine who we coach each other and we meet regularly is we started to write a recap of our wins. And if you can make this a daily practice, it's even more powerful. We had a weekly practice of doing this. And then from time to time, I look to do this at the end of the day because maybe there was something that I really wanted to get done and I didn't get done. And I think, oh, I wasn't really productive because I didn't get that thing done. But when I look back at all the things that I did do and I look at my wins of, oh, actually I had that call and I did that and that person made a change and I got that feedback from that. Then we start to just get connected to, well, actually I was really productive. And it gives us, instead of looking at our to-do list that says, here's all the things you didn't do, right? And sort of get stressed out by all the things you got to do tomorrow because you didn't get to them today. What about just celebrating the things that you did do and recognizing and connecting how that is creating progress in a number of areas. That's been a super help for me. I love that. I would love to get better at that too. And maybe that becomes for the journaling practice is really just what were the wins for today? One thing I recently, I mean, six months ago changed on my to-do list, I call it an accomplishment list. Exactly. That, again, yeah. it's that little, little shift and change in language to see that every day. Cause you're going to check, you're checking the stuff off and to see that this is what I've accomplished instead of what I have to do, that's been really helpful. So that would tie in really well with the end of the day to be like, what did I accomplish today? You know, that list, I got a lot off off there. So yeah. And maybe when you look at the next day for what you're going to do the next day, you just look at your accomplishments as well. Yeah. yeah. Right. Love that. Absolutely. So people love tools and we've been talking a lot and it's really clear that mindset is a really important part of it. The energy and making sure you're managing your energy But just to give those people who are waiting to hear some tools, not counting your calendar or your email. If I were to wipe your phone clear and your computer clear and you had to reinstall, what would the first apps be that you would reinstall? The first one would be Evernote. I think I've just passed my 11 year anniversary with Evernote. So my entire, when I say my entire life is on there, my entire life is on there. I will say though, with that, I'm actually transitioning, I can't believe it, to Notion, just to collaborate with some Google Docs and Asana and and Evernote into one place. But for this moment, Evernote is still my go-to. That would be a huge one. And then the second one, I think you would consider this a tool, but my podcasts. And I love walking. I love listening to podcasts. I listen to podcasts when I'm making dinner. I just listen to them all the time. And that is a massive productivity tool for me because I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm enjoying myself. It's making me happier back to the emotional state. I feel like I've gotten a lot done. 
They're not always about business. Sometimes they're just about like nothing, just silly interviews, whatever it is. But it makes me feel very productive when I am just connecting in that way. And I think that would be my second one. I think we ever note in podcasts. Okay, cool. Yeah. What other tips and tricks do you find that you share the most that are the most valuable for the people that you've worked with? We touched on this and it's not a particular tip, but it's more of the idea of focusing on your attention is more important than focusing on your time because the time will come, like the time management will come if you can get attention management. That's how I feel. So we will figure out how to fit it in. It's not that we don't have time to do it. We just can't stay focused long enough. So whatever tools and tips and strategies you can use to help you with focus. So there's things we've all heard of. There's Pomodoro technique. Go sit in an environment by yourself. Go put your phone on do not disturb. Go, I mean, there's plenty of ways to do it, but it's more about if I told myself every day I was going to get better at focus, I just guarantee you'll get to time and you'll get to your goals faster. So that's one big one. Another thing we talk about a lot are boundaries. And I feel like this is the most undervalued strategy really for women. I know men are listening, but women just seem to have a harder time with this. It's putting up boundaries and you can focus, you can be straight on your goals. You can plan your day, but if you fall short on this part, on the boundaries, it's like, you're risking all of that. You're doing all that hard work and it's not even going to pull itself because right. It's like, there's no rules, there's no parameters and you're just letting everybody else's demands and requests and just infringe on your time. And you're teaching them disrespect of your time and you're teaching them how to treat you and all the things. So I'd say if you can really put attention towards the boundaries and it's sort of like, you got to pick your battles, right? And you can't have boundary for every single thing, but it's like with your kids, you got to pick your battles, pick the ones that you're like, I know it's an overused phrase, but the non-negotiable, but it's like, pick those ones. You're like, if I really just stand to this and communicate it and push back, this is really going to make a big difference in my life and then start there. So what do you think are the top two that you've seen, like the ones that come up for people the most, the top two non-negotiables? I'll do one work and one personal. So okay. work would be distractions like email, text, phone calls, people walking in. Can I have you for a second? So any of those types of like, those every two or three minutes, those distractions, uh -huh. they are very much more in your control than people say, oh, I can't control the people's behavior. I can't control their actions. No, but you can control how you respond. So you can say, hey, I'm in the middle of something. Hey, I'm in a deadline. Hey, can you hold that till after lunch? Hey, do not disturb unless it's an emergency and the house is burning down. Don't come into my office for 30 minutes. Like you have more control than you believe. So that's Absolutely. one at work. And personally, I'd say it's the do it all myself mentality. So this idea that I need to cook everyone's five different meals because in my house, everybody has a different taste. Are you in my house? I know. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and I need to like have the house really perfect. And I'm going to be there for the band practice. It's just like this do it all. There, that is a total lack of boundary. Like we're doing everything and we don't need to outsource right. it, delegate it, or hello, just don't do it. You know, yeah, like the give ourselves permission just yeah. not to be perfect and not to do it all. You Absolutely. Do it. I think it's a very, I'm Indian American for those who can't see me, Indian American. So I am an American, but we visited India all the time growing up. I visit all the time. I think this is a very American mentality for women to do everything in India and a lot of the world, women have a lot of help and they can't even yeah. imagine doing everything that we do here. They're like, I don't even know how you guys do it. That's just silly. Why wouldn't you get help? And I think, right. Why wouldn't we? It's right. true, but it's a mentality, right? It's a mentality and we have to here. get out yeah. of these sort of unproductive patterns yeah. of thinking, right? Yeah. And doing. Yeah, for sure. Well, is there something that I didn't ask you that you feel is really important to share before we close out today? I would just say that when you feel like you're in control, it has a ripple effect across your entire life and your entire world. So because I typically work with women, I'll put in that, but of course, man, you can apply this to your lives, but you become better moms or better dads, better leaders, better managers, better role models, mentors, wives, husbands, daughters, sons, humans. It's so vast when you take control of that. It's such a foundation for the way you show up and you live your life. So I hope that people just kind of embrace it to be on just, oh, having a good calendar 
or being on top of my email. It's really a way of life. And you really allows you to live in alignment the way you want to live for your life personally and professionally. So I just think you can get any goal you want when you really take control of your demands and your focus. Absolutely. So before we end the show, just let the users know or the listeners where they can get a hold of you. The best place to connect is at my site, which is lifeisorganized.com. And if you are interested in staying connected and want some free resources, like how to stop feeling overwhelmed, how to stop procrastinating, how to get more focused, then come on over to lifeisorganized.com forward slash penny, and you can get all of them right there. Perfect. So once again, thank you all for being here, taking away just one really key element that's going to make a difference in your life. Maybe it's just experimenting with the four quarters of the day and how you can get back on track on a quarterly basis of the day versus throwing the whole day, the all or nothing mentality. Uh, Or maybe it's any of the other great nuggets that you got here today. So thank you all for being here and thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing this podcast. My name is Penny Zanker, and this is Take Back Time. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening. Today's topic is another opportunity for you to put the knowledge you learned into practice. Tune in again next week for more strategies that will help you have more energy and focus to get more done in less time so you can continue to take back time.